Today's interview is on regulatory fitness, not your ordinary gym. But similar to a normal gym, you have to exercise a lot and need to be around for a long time to get in shape and stay in shape. Every time new weights are added that might unbalance you. Some people think that fitness is boring. However, with such a changing landscape, I would say never a dull moment. Our instructors of today are Björn Hansen of the European Commission, where Björn is head of unit of chemicals of DG Environment and Dirk van Wel of the Dutch Chemical Industry Association responsible for chemicals policy and occupational health. Welcome. First question this week is always the same. What were you doing in 1996? In 1996 I was uh, with uh, 3M. I was um, dealing with um, chemicals policies, biocidal pro uh, product uh, policies. Um, so I have a, a long history in, in chemicals uh, policy related uh, uh, areas. And Björn? I had to think for a bit, but then I, I got it. I was chairing the technical meetings in the uh, uh, European Chemicals Bureau in Ispra in Italy, implementing the existing chemicals regulation. We had the first four priority substances ever go through the, the process, DEGMA, DEGBA, SCCPs and PCOC, Danish, UK and two Dutch priority substances. The Dutch again, Dirk. You see, always on the priority list. As a well-known global trendsetter in the field of environmental legislation, Europe has developed an advanced regulatory environment in which the production and use of chemical products have to meet high environmental and safety standards. Once in a while, it's time for a fitness check. A fitness check is a comprehensive evaluation of a policy area. Yes, um, first of all, refit or fitness check is part of the better regulation program. So it's all about trying to cut red tape while maintaining whatever protection or objectives uh, that we have. And one of the instruments that we implement is all pieces of legislation at the EU now needs to be regularly evaluated. Dirk, you already mentioned that besides EU legislation, there is a sectoral regulation, national legislation in place in some countries. Uh, sometimes that's historical legislation, sometimes it's legislation with high demands than the EU legislation. How does industry look at this diverse playing field between the EU countries? Uh, coming from a predominantly uh, internationally oriented industry, um, I'm very much concerned with that, uh, uh, of course. Now, as you uh, rightly say, some of the uh, legislation uh, that we are faced, uh, national legislation, is historic. But um, what we do see with some concern is that member states continue to be enticed to, uh, to um, develop national policies on areas that should be harmonized, for instance, um, policies on nanomaterials. Member states who implement legislation, not necessarily policies, but legislation uh, nationally, are required to notify that legislation to the Commission and through a procedure we analyze whether we think it's infringing on existing legislation and here in particular on the harmonized internal market um, and if we believe so then we tell them the member state that they should withdraw the legislation and if not then we take them to court. On the other hand there are also cases for example the French uh, nano registry which we've deemed is not infringing on union legislation uh, basically because there is no such uh, union uh, registry. Um, so there we let uh, France go, just like uh, I think it's uh, Belgium was thinking of doing the same thing. Um, and, but at the same time we are now analyzing and coming to a closure on whether there is a need for an EU-wide uh, nano registry. Basically to evaluate whether there's a need for harmonization in that area or not. So it might be that a few proactive countries will stimulate an upgrade of the regulation on the EU level. That's how the whole system works. The downstream legislation, which can be national, uh, on worker safety legislation and COP are laid down in adapted regulations. What is the progress on the national implementation of the protection of worker directives, Björn? The EU worker protection directives, they are relatively old and they have all been transposed into national legislation, but member states have varying top-ups on top of that. And this is basically a treaty given uh, ability to the member states that they can set their level of protection and in the area of OSH minimum standards are set at the EU level. That there are many many differences between member states in the way the directive is being uh, implemented uh, and that results to 
um, uh, that, that, that they, they use different methodologies. Um, having said that, I do observe among several stakeholders, including trade unions, but industry, member states, uh, commission, uh, maybe I can say, the need for um, uh, a better uh, level playing field. Um, I know that this is uh, one of the important um, uh, objectives of the Dutch presidency, the Ministry of Social Affairs, uh, Minister of Social Affairs, uh, two years ago, I think, uh, wrote the commission on behalf of its German, Austrian and Belgian colleagues uh, 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 calling for a strengthening of the CM directive, for instance, um, with the ob objective of um, harmonizing. In the CVISA directive, the obligations of companies are determined by the classification of the substance. New data, for instance generated under REACH, can result in updated classification and therefore a potential obligation. The same can happen also due to change classification criteria in CLP. In the latter, the consequence of a change criteria in CLP is that companies have an obligation under CVISO. Is this just a consequence for industry or? It is a consequence and they have to live with it. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your valuable view. Um, the EU REACH legislation triggered authorities throughout the world to evaluate their chemical legislation. Maybe one day a global regulatory fitness program for chemicals will be in place. But until that time, we can enjoy the charm of a great variety of compliance exercises in the world. Thank you. Thank you.